The world of 200 million years ago saw some of the strangest animals that had ever lived. Nothing about them suggested they would become a huge success. But these turtles were among the first of Earth's great dynasties of reptiles. Turtles then and now are unique. Their bodies are encased in armor, and that shell has changed little over millions of years. Varying greatly in size, they colonized most of the world. But wherever they live, the basic shape of a turtle's body remains the same. Some land-dwelling turtles, or tortoises, are quite small. Others have become famous as giants. Some long-necked types are at home in and out of fresh water. They and these shorter-necked turtles are known as terrapins. Two hundred and fifty-seven turtle species exist. They live in every environment, from the driest of deserts to the coldest extremes. Some that are gentle vegetarians have become welcome visitors to our homes. Others hunt out of our view. Older than the birds, all turtles may owe their success to their simple design. But what future is there for turtles living life in a shell? Powderham Castle in England is the ancestral home of Lord Devon. It's also the home of Timothy, a rather venerable tortoise. To the present Lord, Timothy is the oldest member of the family. Timothy first came into our family in 1892, and he previously belonged to Captain Rutherford who was a sea captain, um, and undoubtedly he was on board ship um, for quite a long time. And this has given rise to a number of uh, myths about Timothy's beginnings, that he belonged to pirates and all this sort of thing, which aren't strictly true. He's outlived um, a, a number of uh, Earls of Devon. I think um, at a quick count it's about seven. Or, or maybe I'm either the seventh or eighth that, that, that he's known. The suggestion is that Timothy is at least 162 years old. I think he mostly lives on sort of clovers and things, but his favorite really is, is, is strawberries. Now, my son, what about that? He's been known to make a mistake when he uh, is wanting a strawberry and we once had a, a lady with uh, painted red toenails and she got rather a sharp nip on the toenail. But, uh, he doesn't make too many mistakes, he knows usually what he's got. I don't know that he's terribly hungry at the moment. No, nope. I think it's too cold for eating today. Counting growth rings on their shell is not always a reliable guide to a tortoise's age. Rings vary with diet, but tortoises always live life at a slow pace, and that may be a reason for Timmy's record age. 
The fossil record is our best guide to the history of Timmy's ancestors. The first we know lived some 300 million years ago in the world of forests that gave us our coal. From such primitive reptiles, turtles diverged first, leaving dinosaurs and other reptiles to go their own way. Through the ages, there have been turtles of fantastic size and diversity. They saw snakes emerge 100 million years ago and witnessed the extinction of the dinosaurs. That turtles have survived so long is due to the extraordinary design of the shell that protects their body. The shell has remained virtually unchanged for 200 million years. A thick layer of hardened scale is its first line of defense, but a broad bony layer, the carapace, provides strength. In other animals, this bone would be ribs. The turtle's backbone is fused to the shell. It's the support under the bridge. The shell of a turtle serves many purposes. On land, it's heavy, restricting movement, but great protection. Underwater, in a streamlined form, the shell allows for graceful swimming with surprising speed. Power is provided by huge front flippers. Sea turtles migrate thousands of miles swimming on the ocean currents. Their hind limbs are mainly used as rudders for steering. Legs have no appeal for these sailors. Sea turtles only emerge onto land to nest, and even then, flippers are sufficient to haul the turtle over a beach. Freshwater turtles, or terrapins, do have legs, with webbed toes to propel their streamlined shell. When feeding on the bottom of a lake or river, legs are more useful than flippers. And terrapins also climb out of the water, so their legs are essential. A tortoise, walking on land all the time, needs strong legs, in this case to carry it out of danger. The pancake tortoise also has a flattened shell that's handy for fitting into crevices. A caracal can easily spot a meal in these cracks, but the shell of this tortoise, being flexible, can be tightly wedged in the rock. This pancake tortoise's casing defeats the inquisitive cat. Giant tortoises, and this one on a Galapagos island is among the largest in the world, have no natural predators to hide from. But they need weightlifters' legs to move their enormous shell. This one is hauling a house that weighs nearly 300 pounds and is over an inch thick. A tiny box turtle leads a far more troubled life in raccoon country, but its domed shell has a cunning device that usually outwits such hunters. It's time to take evasive action. The shell is hinged. The drawbridge comes up, and all of the turtle, head, limbs, and tail, is safe inside its castle. Only when the raccoon retreats will the turtle venture out. That hinge on the lower shell saved its life.
The turtle's shell has survived some huge challenges over millions of years. But sometimes, no matter how good the design, the odds can be against it. That is one lucky tortoise. Surviving the heat of a desert is a particular challenge for tortoises. They can only control their temperature by moving into and out of the sun. Dr. Jeff Lovage of the United States Geological Survey is radio tracking a desert tortoise on a wind farm in California. Desert tortoises have recently started to decline, and Jeff wants to find out why. Well, here's one of our females. Hello. It's getting a little warm out here, isn't it? It's only 9 o'clock right now, but it's already hot out here. It's probably 95 degrees, and it's going to be 115 before the day is over. And she's heading for the burrow off to my right. The tortoise needs the burrow to survive and protect itself from the extremes that are so characteristic of the desert. 115 degrees. 30 degrees more than even this desert tortoise could survive out in the open. Look at her walking into my shadow. Desert tortoises take advantage of every opportunity they can to become cool in the midday sun. At the other end of the thermometer, extremes of cold present their own challenge. Some turtles in Canada can survive freezing temperatures. Called painted sliders, their frozen bodies are not drawing breath, and their hearts are not beating, and yet they are not dead. These hatchlings, born in August, freeze and unfreeze throughout the winter until the final thaw in spring. How the cells of their body survive this, nobody knows. Yet the painted sliders leave their nest and start active life unharmed. Such marvelous abilities to survive were entirely to the turtle family's advantage until humans appeared on the horizon. In the centuries before refrigeration was invented, it was sailors who took advantage of the turtle's special qualities. Since turtles can survive for several months without food, they could be carried aboard as a supply of fresh meat. Killing turtles for their tasty meat is a very ancient practice. Wham! That's a direct hit. It's painless for the turtle, though, because we use a special kind of harpoon point, just enough of it to penetrate his tough layer of shell. That is now known to be nonsense. Nerve endings by the hundreds fill both shell and bone, but myths die as hard as the turtles. These turtles weigh from 300 to 500 pounds, and their age is estimated at a pound to the year. By the start of the 20th century, overexploitation had brought some kinds of turtles to the brink of extinction. Today, turtle soup and meat consumption continues despite international laws, which attempt to protect endangered turtles. The turtle may well be our defenseless victim, but in the natural world, these successful reptiles have for a long time been quite capable of defending themselves. Tiger sharks and their relatives kill sea turtles in deep water. But in these shallows, this loggerhead turtle can turn the tables.
The turtle is biting the shark. It has no teeth, but the sharp serrated plates in its strong jaws can inflict serious injury. In shallow water, the shark's movements are restricted, and it has difficulty fighting back. After a breath of air, the valiant turtle can return to feeding. It can give as good as it gets. A loggerhead eats a variety of seafoods, but its beak is ideal for capturing hard-shelled prey. Bad luck for this crab. In freshwater, a camouflaged turtle is hunting. This is a matamata. It will blend with the fallen leaves and wait for a fish to come within range. Then it simply sucks them in. The fearsome jaws of an alligator snapping turtle gape and reveal a worm-like appendage on its tongue. Lured by its wriggling, a fish investigates this death trap. And there are even turtles that hunt together. Donald Stridum knows that visitors to the Swardini Reptile Park in South Africa are fascinated by the bloodthirsty terrapins he exhibits there. It's feeding time in the terrapin pool. You know, if I had to put my finger into this water, they would eat it. Um, but I'm going to give them something else to eat, their favorite food, a little piece of uh, chicken here. And uh, if I lower that down, they're going to move towards this. Come, guys. Come on. You'll probably find that the red ear terrapins come first. They are normally the more dominant. And here comes one now. You can see why it's called a red ear terrapin. It's got the little red mark behind the eye. And look at that. He's a dominant one, so he, he will come first. And here comes one of the serrated hinged terrapins on the side here. And the rest of them are going to respond to the movement. In fact, they would have to eat in colonies. They can't easily, as you can see here, bite off a chunk of uh, meat on their own. So they need to tear it amongst each other. They eat in much the same way as piranhas, so lots together biting off chunks and pieces of meat. And you can see that happening right here now. Red has got a really good grip on it. They tear at the meat. This is all very necessary in nature. They clean up the place. They in fact the aquatic hyenas. Forget big game watching here. Keep your eyes on these little guys. Eating chicken on a plate in the reptile park is nothing compared with how these terrapins feed in the wild. The predator sizes up its prey, these quilia, which flock in the thousands. One terrapin grabs a bird. The others crowd in to snatch what they can. Even birds as big as doves are not safe from the helmeted terrapin's submarine attack. A lone terrapin could overcome the dove, but hungry rivals are on their way.
And turtles can be even more competitive when it comes to mating. The birds of Dassen Island off the Cape Coast of South Africa share their tiny home not only with rabbits, but also with more than 10,000 tortoises. But not until the temperature climbs to 75 degrees do they come out. Male angulated tortoises hold territories, and once they've warmed up, they begin to chase females on their turf. Once he's found one, he won't easily let her go. 